Jesus Christ. You will not understand this video if you have not at least watched the first video. And in such a case, is best for you to watch entire series if you want to perceive God's existence. Before we start, I would like to refer to the speed of sound that has been mentioned in previous video and how it points to Jesus. When a word is uttered, a sound goes along. Speed of sound measured in milliseconds. This you should remember, though there is one more thing that has not been mentioned. The number 343 is nothing else but 7 times 7 times 7. And three sevens of course points to Jesus. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. This is how the high priest looked like. And these are the garments which they shall make. A breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a skillfully woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. So they shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, and his sons, that he may minister to me as priest. Though, we will focus on the breastplate. You shall make the breastplate of judgment. Artistically woven, according to the workmanship of the ephod, you shall make it. Of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen, you shall make it. It shall be doubled into a square. A span shall be its length, and a span shall be its width. And mount on it a setting of gemstones. Four rows of stones. The twelve stones are to correspond to the names of the sons of Israel, each engraved like a seal with the name of one of the twelve tribes. Here are the stones with the names of Israelites' tribes engraved in them. And this breastplate also corresponds to the one who is everywhere. The one who designed this breastplate in the most extraordinary way and how he has done it, you are about to see. Who has performed and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I am Yahweh, am the first, and with the last, I am He. If we sum the gematria of all names from the first level, And then from the third, which is the last level. And add them up we will get outstanding signature of God. Jesus Christ. But look, we have three levels, yet only the first and the third conveys the message, showing us also something else, the basic number representing God, the number 13. And as a reminder, the first verse of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The verse speaks about God, which created our world. The verse creates a collateral triangle, in which the 13th letter is in the center of it. So if we will look closer, we will notice that this thirteenth letter is the part of the Elohim. God in Hebrew language. 
Now, focus as much as you can. There is a verse in which John said, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he abode on him. And the verse in which Jesus said, Jesus said, Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. So if we know that the Holy Spirit and the Father are in Jesus, and Jesus is the Elohim, then it should be clear what this 13 speaks for. One God, three persons, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit is the Elohim. Are you the one who still don't believe in Trinity? So I will show you a bit more, not everything, as there is too much, but a bit more. Look at the word Elohim once more, but from different prospect. If we spell out each letter of the word, we will notice that there is 13 letters. And now, look at the gematria of each letter spelling. We got 12, and 12 reduces to 3, indicating something for us. But let's dig further. When we remove zeros and add the spellings of individual letter, and then add the sums up together, get 21, which also reduces to 3. Doesn't it look like God enforces the 3 on the Elohim? Though, yet let's look at the 21 and 12, as they together carry tremendous message. You should already know that the 21 is number indirectly pointing at Jesus, but 12 is the reflection of 21. And if we will read it from right to left, and read the equation also from right to left, then we have number indirectly pointing, this time at Christ. So again, who is the Elohim? Jesus Christ. And the Elohim is three. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. This verse is in the last chapter of Revelation, which is made of 21 verses, it is the 13th verse counted from beginning, and the ninth counted from the end. And it gives description of God, three times expressing one the same thing. The Living One. I was dead, and behold, now I am alive, forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and of Hades. This verse is in the first chapter of Revelation, which is made of 20 verses. It is the 18th verse, counted from beginning, and the third counted from the end. Can you see how they interact together? Maybe pause the video and look at it. Though, this interconnection is just a very subtle addition. But, what I really want you to focus on is this. This is the Hebrew alphabet. And this is the first letter, the beginning of the alphabet, the Hebrew alpha, called the left. And this is the last letter, the end of the alphabet, the Hebrew Omega called Tav. Now look at the spelling of those both letters and their gematria. see what outcome of this gematria we will get. And the letter Aleph itself represents God. So, let's look at it closer to see what it will tell us. Gematria from two levels after reduction turns to be the three, and the gematria of the letter itself is one. 
So now, we will replace some of the words from this verse with the Gematria. And look what we will get. I am the 13, the 13, the 13. You understand now why Satan made this delusion to people to think that the 13 is an unlucky number. Only because it is the best number describing God. And Satan knows about it. So he changed it to something bad. Just to drive people away from the truth and true God. I think now it should be easier to understand the part in which Jesus said. He is in the Father and the Father is in him. Jesus said. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Also the last part of the verse, where it said, If you don't believe in what Jesus said, then believe because of the works themselves. Because some of those works just have been shown to you. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Try not to forget that. And now let's go back to the breastplate. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? In this verse, we have a hint from God. So let's divide the sum gematria of all Israel's tribes by four to get a fourth part. What is the 925? Jesus Christ. An English standard gematria. But that's not all from the hint of the fourth part, as it is multiple dimensional hint. is another fourth part of Israel, which consists of three tribes. This is where the story begins, which was given by God, and is based on true events that already has came and are due to come. It is not a fairy tale, but the true story, how God saved many people from eternal death, and we all are in this story. I hope you already remember that 888 is the Greek standard gematria of Jesus. The first word with gematria of 888 used in the Bible's New Testament is Jesus. Now, look at those names and the sum of their gematria. Christ. The first word with gematria of 1480 used in the Bible's New Testament is Christ. I am Yahweh of the first. I am He. And the last part should blow your mind. This number doesn't look much familiar. Though, if we will follow the pattern of the first words used, then. The first word with gematria of 1332 used in the Bible's New Testament is Sanctify. Do you see the message? Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things which have not been done, saying, My purpose will be established and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. This is what High Priest was wearing on his chest. 
what Israelites knew about it that time. Of course not, because the gematria of their tribe's names correlates only with New Testament, which has been written in Greek language over 1,500 years later. And please do not speculate if you do so that Jews have done it in some kind of conspiracy to deceive the world, as they themselves have not accept Jesus till today as their savior. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Yahweh, do all these things. The Yahweh has made everything for his own purposes, even the wicked for a day of disaster. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you see any contradiction here, as in the verses said, God sanctify, and breastplate says, it is Jesus Christ who sanctify, then please watch all previous videos, and I recommend to watch also the future ones. But let's move on, as there is much more. The sum of Gematria, of all names, is 3700. In the entire Bible, there is no word with such a Gematria. But there are three verses, all of them in Old Testament. And if we stick to the pattern of the first, the first verse will be this. If you sin unintentionally and do not observe all these commandments which the Yahweh has spoken to Moses. So we have two statements with the same 3700 common denominator that complies with principle of first occurrence in the Bible. And do not forget that these things that you see, and are about to see, are not science fiction movie or a video game, but has been encoded in breastplate about 3,400 years ago by God himself and are our reality. Let's hear out those statements together. If you sin unintentionally and do not observe all these commandments which the Yahweh has spoken to Moses, Jesus Christ will sanctify you. Before I end this episode, I want you to see one more thing. Look at the gematria of the names that sum up to the gematria of Jesus Christ in Greek language. But when we add them up as the individual digits, That's right, we will get the Gematria of Christ in Hebrew. But if we add up individual digits of the both sums, to our eyes, Jesus will appear in Hebrew Gematria. So, from the same names, we get Jesus Christ in Greek and Hebrew Gematria, which interlocks each other. Tell me which else, God, did such a thing that you have seen in this and all previous videos. so I may look into it. Come, gather together, and draw near, you fugitives of the nations, those who carry their wooden idols, and pray to a God who cannot save, have no knowledge. Speak up, and present your case. Yes, let them take counsel together.